Due to its vast size, more than 80% of the ocean has never been explored by humans. Although humans have not seen most of the ocean, many species travel across the ocean regularly, such as the European eel, Anguilla anguilla. The European eel is a fairly small species, yet it can migrate over 5,000 kilometers from the western Atlantic Ocean to the continental shelf of Europe. The European eel has multiple life stages, each in a specific habitat. Eels hatch from their eggs as larvae in the western Atlantic Ocean and cross the ocean to the continental slope of Europe, where they metamorphosize into glass eels. The glass eels migrate to estuaries, a place where a river meets the ocean. Here, glass eels metamorphosize into elver juveniles and swim upstream to freshwater environments. They then turn into adult yellow eels. After multiple years, the yellow eels turn into silver eels and migrate back across the Atlantic Ocean to spawn and die. For the majority of the video, we will focus on glass eels. Glass eels use magnetic fields to gauge their orientation in flowing water. They have an internal magnetic compass mechanism which allows them to sense the magnetic field. Although glass eels use an internal compass, it is unknown what causes them to swim towards a specific magnetic direction. Since it was unknown if magnetic direction was an innate property or if it was imprinted upon during migration, a study was conducted. The hypothesis tested by Cresci and Company and published in 2019 was that glass eels imprint their tidal-dependent magnetic compass direction at the estuaries where they recruit. To test this hypothesis, researchers collected 222 glass eels from four different estuaries in Norway. These four estuaries are shown as red dots on the map. The direction of water flow at each estuary is also labeled. These estuaries were selected specifically for their differing cardinal directions of water flow. Each glass eel involved in the experiment was introduced to one of four magnetic directions using an electric coil system. The direction that the eels swam with the magnetic stimulus was recorded with respect to the current tidal direction of each eel's recruitment estuary. The results showed that 70% of glass eels have a preference for magnetic orientation direction, with this being in correspondence to the direction of tidal flow at the recruitment estuaries. This supports the hypothesis that glass eels are able to memorize the magnetic direction of currents at their estuaries using their internal magnetic compass. The ability to memorize magnetic directions of water currents allows glass eels to orient themselves in moving water as they migrate. It ultimately remains unknown when the glass eels imprint this magnetic information, whether it is inherited from their parents or whether it's activated from their initial migration. Understanding the magnetic preference of glass eels shows an important evolved characteristic. In order to be well equipped for survival, glass eels evolved a biological compass. The ability to memorize magnetic directions for migration is so essential that it is seen in other species as well. For example, Pacific salmon have a similar magnetic compass to glass eels. In order to make their several thousand kilometer migration, Pacific salmon detect both magnetic intensity and their orientation relative to the magnet north to determine their geographical position. Not just salmon, but sea turtles, birds, and even monarchs have been shown to navigate using the Earth's magnetic field, a prime example of convergent evolution. In regards to European eels, understanding the mechanisms behind their migration is important for conservation. Unfortunately, European eels are considered critically endangered by the IUCN Red List. In order to put in place the most effective conservation measures, it is critical to understand their migration patterns and internal compass. Creating conservation measures for glass eels is especially important because they are a keystone species. A great example of a keystone species being removed from its environment are the wolves in Yellowstone. In the 1920s, wolves were seen as a risk to humans in Yellowstone, so they were killed off in the region. The elk population then grew uncontrollably since their main predator was gone. The elk overgrazed the land, which in turn impacted other species such as bunnies, bears, and fish. The absence of wolves negatively impacted the entire ecosystem. When wolves were reintroduced, the ecosystem returned to balance, which shows how essential wolves are to Yellowstone. The wolves in Yellowstone have displayed the unforeseen consequences of removing a keystone species from an ecosystem. Since glass eels are also a keystone species, it is worrisome to think of the environmental impact if they go extinct. A specific example of a negative impact would be on mussels, as eels transport their larvae around. Mussels clean the water by absorbing chemicals and pollutants, but when they are not spread throughout rivers, there will be poor water quality, which in turn negatively affects the entire ecosystem. Furthermore, glass eels are a food source for other animals, such as turtles and birds, so their absence would force their predators to find other food sources. In conclusion, in order to conserve the keystone species, we must gain a greater understanding of them. 
We now know that glass eels memorize the magnetic direction of currents at their estuaries, but more research is needed to understand their migration mechanisms. This may give us insight as to why less of them are finding their estuary and freshwater habitats, such as if anything inhibits their use of magnetic directions or prevents their abilities to successfully migrate. All in all, we have a lot to learn not only about glass eels, but also about the largely unexplored ocean and its inhabitants.